All right, we're live. Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 118. We're going to title this, I Need a PC. And a PC could stand for anything that's related to some sort of personal computer. But I now that my students are graduating, I get a lot of emails and questions and tweets saying, Mr. Cohen, what computer should I get for college? And I said, you know what? This is an awesome question because substitute college for the next four years of anything for general purpose computing. And now we have a show that we can talk about simple security, simple conveniences, and simple things. Tom and I vary a little differently, but I think for the most part, we're on the same page. So, so Tom, what have you heard? Well, personally, I'm a big fan of the Tandy. Uh, I, I think it's absolutely great. Um, it, uh, it comes with 128 kilobytes of memory. It's got the Intel 8186, 8 megahertz of processing power. You're not going to need any bit more of that. Um, it was released in 1983, and you can usually find them in the dumpsters behind your nearest radio shack. Well, remember, what did Steve Jobs famously say? No one's ever going to need more than 64 kilob kilobytes of RAM. Someone said that. I think it was disproven. So, or you can be uh, like Stephen Hackett, who decided that as a museum piece, he wants to collect all the the IMAX, the colorful IMAX that were released in, uh, what is it? Yes. 2000, not 2004, 97, right when Steve Jobs came back. Yeah. So, and he did. He collected all of them, and it looks amazing. But look, it's here's the issue. It's, it's... <clears throat> Tom and I, or if you're in the computer field, that question, what phone or what laptop or what uh, consumer electronics should I buy, has, ring, rings a lot of different bells. And we can sit here for hours and we can debate every spec. But there are certain things that I think we agree on to say, this is the bare minimum or the essentials, or this is what you need for general purpose computing. Look, if you're gaming or you're doing something really specific, this show is not for you. We're like I said, we're talking about you're sending your kids to college or what do they need for four years of high school or what do you, what can you buy and not have to worry about it? This is what we're going to try and talk about. Yeah, and there's there's a whole lot of options on there. Um, but, you know, being the, the security show on this network, we do have to enforce that no matter what you buy, uh, if you're buying a Windows PC, a Mac, you don't really have to worry about it on a Chromebook. Uh, make sure you send them off with some sort of off-site backup because you know they're going to spill beer all over it or coffee or whatever or drop it and the hard drive is going to fry or throw it in a lake. Or, I, I mean, college happens and it happens to computers a lot. So whether it's Carbonite, Crash Plan, Mosey, it doesn't matter. Just give them something to keep their data backed up off-site all the time. It's... It's basically, so I'll start off with, you know what, just get a Mac. And and the first thing I get is this really, this really deep sigh of, uh, you just gave me a $1,400 bill that I have to now pay. And, I'm, and I say, look, you wanted an answer, this is my answer. If, if you want more than that, then we have to go into a little detail. Do you have a few minutes to discuss this? Because the first thing I'm going to say is, what what are the goals? And I think the, the first question you have to ask is, do you want to buy something every year for four years or every 18 months? Or do you want to buy something that's going to last you four years? It doesn't matter what the answer is, but if you're going to buy something for every 18 months, that means you have to, be, you have to work on backing up uh, all the security – Everything that you're going to need to do is every 18 months, you're going to have a five or six hour job of rebuilding everything. If it's all yeah. set up, cleaning off all the crapware that comes bundled with this, um, you know, making sure that windows is tuned the way you want it to, uh, making sure that, you know, the backup software actually worked and you can pull back data. And if you're backing up a lot of data, you know, that restore process can take days or weeks, depending on the amount of data. Um, so it's a, big deal. I've, I've had parents ask me this uh, because I'm, you know, the tech guy to my friends and family say, well, you know, how much should I plan on spending? I, I saw this Toshiba for like 300 bucks at Walmart. No, no, please, please don't for the love of God. Um, because it, you know, you're exactly right. What is going to happen is that machine will break. It will fall apart. 
literally, I've seen them fall apart. Um, and you're going to buy a new laptop, a new $300 laptop every year that the kid is in college, right? That's $1,200. So you can either spend that up front or you can prepare to spend, you know, $300 four times and a whole bunch of your time when you've just taken care of it right the first time around. So, and the parent always inevitably asks me, so what is your opinion? What would you do? I said, look, I, I know how to back up. I know how to be secure. I know how to remove this. I enjoy on some level this, this setting up process. So for me, I would probably go and do buy a $340 laptop twice or three times, but that's because I know what I want to do. And you know what? The money, $400 is cheaper for your is four years down the road than spending $1,200 now. But if your son or daughter is not backing up, they don't understand versioning control or, or offsite backup or don't understand all these things, then the more time to fiddle with something, the more likely that you're going to lose something. And that's where the $1,000 the or $1,300 goes into effect. And, you know, I mean, there's, there's really the elephant in the room here that we haven't talked about. Why not just a Chromebook? In, in, in all reality, a Chromebook can do just about everything that you're going to need in college as far as a portable machine is. If you wanted to augment the Chromebook, you could even, you know, build or buy a cheaper desktop and it, you still get under the $1,000 mark. Um, a Chromebook is going to be perfectly suited to college. It's got Office. You've got the entire Google suite. Um, you know, a, a lot of colleges are actually using Google as their their student, I guess I, I want to say platform uh, for every, everything from email to documents to calendaring to scheduling. You know, it's all built right into the Google for Education suite, uh, which is actually really nice. And a Chromebook fits perfectly into that. The, so, oh, go ahead. The only issues I could see with getting a Chromebook is if you are going into something like, you know, a computer science degree where there's going to be a lot of programming um, or, uh, you know, anything in the design field, whether it's 3D design, graphic design, uh, anything music related, you're, you're going to need uh, Windows or a Mac, Mac more so for the, the design side of things. Um, that's not to say you can't get by with Chromebook. You absolutely can, but you will require a desktop on the side just to make up for what the Chromebook lacks in areas of design and programming. Ask yourself what you do now, because nothing's really going to change. You're in high school. You're doing the same type of academic work that you're doing there. So I liked your idea at the beginning. Why don't you buy a very good Chromebook and then see what you need? And I, my initial gut was buy a Chromebook and then buy a desktop. But let's take with your example. Send the person to school with, here's a Chromebook. Now, my recommendation for a Chromebook is an Intel chip and four gigs of RAM. That's generally my, yeah. my thing. You can find them for $300. Because when you're in class, what are you doing? You're taking notes. If you're in a design class, you're using the school's computers. If you're in a programming class or some sort of lab, you're using their computers. But if you're in a liberal arts or business or whatever major, you're taking notes. And when you're on downtime, you're surfing the internet. You're not playing. I mean, again, we're not talking about playing playing crisis here. We're talking about this is some downtime. You're watching YouTube or Netflix or you're listening to music. All of that is built in. The only thing with the Chromebook that you might not get, and I think they've solved this problem now, is iTunes. iTunes, you're going to wirelessly sync with something else. Or you're going to have your streaming services or whatever else. So the syncing and the backing up now, I think they, they managed to get iTunes completely out of the iPhone process unless you're doing some backups. Right. And, you know, everything Everything you do normally on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, Spotify, Netflix, Facebook, YouTube, go to Gmail. It's all there on the Chromebook. It's all perfectly usable. It's the exact same browser you're probably using right now. Uh, and you don't have to worry about the security side of things because Chromebooks are incredibly secure, out of the box, set to defaults. They're, they're great. Uh, everyone, you know, applauds the security that went into Chrome OS and the design. They're really, really locked down secure machines, but they give the user enough freedom to be able to do what they need to, uh, as long as what they need to do is in a browser, which for most people that works out just fine. So you don't need to worry about the security side of things. That's all taken care of. And backup, 
because you're on a Chromebook, all of your your bookmarks, your apps, your settings, all that stuff is all you know sucked into Google's cloud, stored there securely, uh, and you don't have to worry about it because if your Chromebook falls in a lake, you pick up another Chromebook, you sign in, and all your stuff pops back in. Uh, I know this from experience, not the lake part, but just signing into another Chromebook, it all just pops in. You don't have to worry about backups. Well, yes, and the good part is when you buy a new Chromebook, they give you a terabyte free for two years. So a terabyte free for two years is is basically $200 free if you were going to buy that. And remember, you still need a backup solution. So if you're going to get it with the Chromebook, you're going to get it there. The other issue is um, if you need to buy it beyond that, what you have to do is is twenty five dollars gets you like a hundred twenty five dollars a year gets you like a hundred gigs, which for most people for your papers is fine, especially if you're streaming everything. Yeah, as long as you don't have you know local media, you're trying to sync up the drive or pull down, uh, you'll be fine. A hundred gigs in terms of you know papers and projects for school is nothing. Is I mean, <laughs> it's several college students worth of of space. So let's let's throw out the Chromebook. You don't want the Chromebook. I say Chromebook and a desktop. I'm assuming you're just going to say if you don't want the Chromebook, go straight with the laptop. Um, I I could go either way on this. Uh, a desktop is good. Um, now you, know, you get the same setup issues with a desktop that you would with a laptop. You're you're going to need you know to to make sure that your operating system is behaving the way you want it to. Whether you get you know, a, a trash can Mac or um, a, uh, a Windows PC of some kind, uh, you're going to need backup software set up. Um, if you've got the Chromebook, the only thing you have to do to make sure the Chromebook and the PC stay in sync is install Chrome, which you're probably going to do anyway, right? Because no one uses the default browsers. You're going to have to clean up all the crapware that comes bundled in on it because that happens a lot. There's a lot of, like, nasty, horrible adware that comes on PCs today. Um, I, I think it's a good middle ground. It's definitely a good compromise. Um, there, there is the issue of, you know, if something breaks, you are going to have to either talk to support, to get a warranty person out there, or fix it yourself. See, for me, I, when I went to college, I had the laptop. And what I ended up, and I had a really, really old desktop. I'm, big, I'm very big on the Chromebook and desktop part because you'll get a lot more buck, a lot more bang for your buck using a desktop. You, and it's expandable. If you need to replace something, it's easy to replace. The only problem is you can't walk around with your desktop. And that Thanksgiving weekend home or that Christmas break, now you have a decision to make. Do you want to disconnect all that and bring it home versus your laptop? But if you go with the desktop, you can buy a ginormous screen, and that can also double as your TV. You're probably not watching TV, but you can see Game of Thrones on a 32-inch screen rather than a 13-inch screen. Yeah, and most mothers today have got HDMI connections. So if you wanted to, you know, spend 100 bucks on a Roku and hook it up to the campus's network and stream Netflix all day long, you could totally do that, it, depending on your, you know, university's network policies. So, so again, it's, it's – laptops are great to take around. But then you have the other problem of the cheap laptops of the battery life. So I think the number one most – the two big things that you're dealing with when you're, when you're a college student choosing a laptop is durability and battery life. The speed is not that important unless you're doing something specific. But most of the time, it's going to be in your bag and you're going to bang it around or, as you said, spill refreshing beverages on it. And you're going to have that all day, either streaming movies on your bed or whatever it is, that battery life now becomes an issue. You don't want this. You don't want something lasting 90 minutes. And when you buy a cheap laptop, that's what's going to happen. It's going to last you 90 right. minutes if you're lucky. And and if you're just going to tether it to your desk, save that money and go put it into a desktop. Yeah, if you're not going to carry around a laptop, if, if it's, you know, too heavy, which was a common complaint in college, you know, dude, you have this laptop, why does it sit on your desk? It, the problem was either it's too heavy and it annoys me, or the problem was the battery lasts literally seven minutes. Um, and with a cheap laptop, you're basically guaranteed to have bad, bad battery life. Now, if you get a Chromebook, battery life is kind of not an issue. The battery lasts a long long time uh, from, you know, the last time I used my Chromebook. Um, and if you get a Mac, the battery life is a non-issue because 
they're crazy immortal long, and I don't know what kind of black magic Apple uses to make these super batteries, but the Mac just won't die. You can't kill it. Uh, it's actually pretty amazing. But with any Windows PC, you know, you're going to get a couple years out, uh, and the battery is going to lose effectiveness, uh, effectiveness. So you will need to spend, you know, anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks, depending on manufacturer, to go buy a replacement battery. And that's fine. That's wear and tear. That's, you know, putting new tires on your car. It, it's just expected to happen. If you go cheap, be ready to replace. If you're going to go expensive, look, I have my mid-2009 um, MacBook Pro still running. Yes, I've upgraded the RAM and I upgraded to a solid state drive, but I did that as it got slower. Tom told me, buy the Mac here, but buy the, don't buy a full RAM. Just buy a little bit, like a little upgrade, so you can upgrade it a little bit later. In a couple of years, when 16 gigs goes uh, becomes too slow, put 32 in. You have that ability to upgrade that also. But it's it's still an, it's still we're we're still talking about what you should buy, and I think the answer is figure out what you're going to need it for, and be ready to buy right away. So people say, well, I want to buy right before I go to college and understand. Well, if you're going to keep the laptop on your desk. Maybe go for a desktop. And the whole thing with all of this, and we forgot to even mention, you have your smartphone with you. Remember, you have a smartphone or an iPad that's still kicking around. So if you can learn, and so instead of buying a Chromebook, you want to use your iPad and, learn, and buy a keyboard to augment it, to take notes, if that's what you're going to do, then do that. The, the idea behind the Chromebook is either you can get all of college through it or it's going to be to take to your classes so you can take notes and do things. The The machine at home is going to be where you're going to play and do some more heavy lifting if you need to. Yeah, and if let's say, let's say you hate all of these options. You don't want a Chromebook. You don't want a Mac. You just want a laptop of some kind, but you don't want to replace it every three years. What do you do? What should I look for? And what I've always told people in it, always scares them. It always messes with people's heads. I say, okay, you're going to go buy a laptop. And really, at this price point, it, the brand doesn't really matter. It matters a little bit, but not as much as you think it does. Buy something that's $1,000 or more. $1,000 is your absolute floor. You could even dip to 800 but you're still making some cuts there. So pick a laptop that's 1000 bucks. Or higher. Don't go crazy. Don't go buy a three thousand dollar gaming laptop. You'll regret it later. I know. I did that. <laughs> so so pick pick a thousand dollar laptop and and go with that. And everyone I've told that to, everyone that's been through college after I've given their parents this advice that have gone through uh, with thousand dollar laptop, it has literally lasted their entire collegiate career uh, with pretty good success. It starts to fall off at you know the end of four or five years, and that's fine. That's average life of a laptop. You buy a nice laptop like that. Again, when we say a thousand dollars, there's going to be deals. We're not saying a thousand dollars and then with uh, the thirty percent off. You look you look towards the end of August, you're going to see some deals as processors change. So a thousand dollars could really be eight ninety nine or eight fifty. And I, I do have some some scary advice, and we'll get into this in detail here in a bit. But and you have to be really careful if you're a tech, and and if you're listening to the show, you're probably more tech play minded than most. Um, keep an eye out on eBay. Look for specifically business class laptops. Look for HP Pro books. Look for uh, Dell Latitudes. Uh, look for uh, the Lenovo T series uh, or the X series. Um, look for deals on company branded laptops. You know, these are business machines. They're meant to be taken apart. They're meant to be handed out to employees, and they're designed to take a lot of wear and tear. Uh, I've I actually found several amazing deals on business laptops on eBay, and these machines were in fantastic quality. I actually I use one as my daily driver now pristine quality at literally half the price. So if you're on a budget, keep an eye out for deals. They don't happen all the time, but you know, if you watch for a couple weeks, you'll find something. And we I, will talk about brands here in a bit. My, my wife had a requirement. She needed to, to do her couponing, a 17 inch laptop with a terabyte of hard, 
a lot of hard drive space. And I think that a lot meant a terabyte, but you wanted it to last. So Woot, of all places, had this crazy HP, like super duper tough book, like made out of, a, 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 it, it was, it, it is a monster. And, she, and this thing's like 30 pounds. She goes, it doesn't matter. I'm moving it from one desk to the other. It has a 10 minute battery life. I think the power brick is, is the power brick is 10 pounds. Yeah, it, it's crazy. But I'm not, I'm not afraid of breaking it. Like I, I'm not afraid of like the baby knocking it over. I don't think anything bad is going to happen to it. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend something that, that durable for college because the thing is huge. It has a secondary battery. That's that's the level of battery power we're talking. Yeah, as far as sizes on laptops go, don't don't go above fifteen. Um, I know I did it. I'm the guy that had the seventeen inch gaming laptop in class, and while it was awesome, and I could play Fallout Three whenever I wanted, even in class. And yeah, that happened sometimes. Uh, yeah, the battery life was just atrocious after the first year. Uh, I went through a bunch of batteries and the power brick and the thing was heavy and it overheated a lot. It's keep it, keep it at 15 inches or below. You don't need a screen that big. Trust me. If you need a screen that big, go buy a monitor, use it as a TV. So, so I guess the first thing is, so we said, look, eight, eight hundred, a thousand dollars. Let's go through those specs. I want to say you don't need an I seven. I3 is a little low. I5 is probably a good number. You cut out there for a minute. I was going to say, I was going to say, I agree. The process, I agree. If you're talking about processors, on, uh, I think I5 PCs is today, the sweet spot. You know, the I7, if you're, if you're not doing virtualization and if you're not planning on overclocking it, uh, you know, I7 is. Who cares? Uh, get an i5. That's that's perfect for just about everyone. And then I go with RAM. I think eight gigs is too little. But now that, but now that I'm using it on my Mac, my my old MacBook with a Mac, MacBook Pro using it, I think it's pretty yeah, good. For, if you for go 16, 16 gigs on a laptop, 16, you know, but like, I think especially is the bare if you're buying this aftermarket to go upgrade a laptop. Uh, I think 16 is going to be really nice. It'll last you for a bit. Uh, eight should be your floor. You don't want to go four. Four is really, really getting into a, a weird zone, especially with Windows machines. Uh, so keep it eight uh, or above. And if if you know what you're doing, and you can't do this on a Mac, if you want to do get eight, and yeah. then in two years upgrade to 16. That's another option that you can do. RAM will be cheaper then and everything else. So if you know what you're doing, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't want to mess with it, eight is the minimum. 16 is probably the right answer. You said screen size of 13 yeah. or 15. Uh, there there are 13, some 11 that are, over 15. that are nice. Um, it will feel cramped uh, if you do a lot of research papers. If you've got you know a browser on this side, your paper's over here, it, it can feel a little claustrophobic to get to, you know, trying to do projects with a lot of windows open. So I think 13 and above uh, 13 to 15 is a good sweet spot. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think all the storage space. I would, I think my recommendation is solid state. Like just don't do not go spinning hard drives. Do not do hybrid hard drives. Make sure it says SSD or solid state. I'm good with I. I can do 128. With uh, yeah, an I think 256, especially else. if you're going to keep this but for a long maybe time. Maybe 256 is the minimum. Operating systems are going to get bigger. You're going to fill this thing up with security patches. Uh, you're going to be installing applications in it. And yeah, let's be honest. A college student is going to collect a bunch of movies, a bunch of music, a bunch of games, and a bunch of stuff that's not school related. So I think 256 is going to be your floor on that. If you can go higher, do it. But be warned that if you get a 512 gig SSD right now, it is going to jack your price up. I think the whole SSD, that's going to be your, that's going to yeah. be the one where you're going to say, do I really yeah. need it? And we're telling you, yes. 
you absolutely need it because that's probably going to jack up the price at least $100, $150 yeah, it's, just to it's go the solid difference state. between the machine so, feeling but that's sluggish important. and Everything actually else, feeling like you're using the thing and operating it instead of just issuing commands and waiting for it to return. Now, this is, and this has been a while since I've been in college. Check the college. Make sure that they they have Wi-Fi that, if you're going to buy a laptop, it's probably not going to have an Ethernet jack, but check with college to see if they have Wi-Fi in the dorms, because then you may need to buy an adapter for it, or right. look for and a laptop that still the comes with the business jack, class laptop. It's hard to find. It looks really um, intriguing. It's because they've got all the ports, because businesses use all the ports. No. I don't think you need a discrete graphics card unless you, know, <laughs> unless you can explain you to me why you need a discrete graphics if card. You're, uh, if you're uh, gaming. Uh, and if you're gaming, you shouldn't be gaming on a laptop. You should go build a desktop. Um, it, it's just a better experience. You can get away with it, but it's not really recommended if you can build a, a real machine, a real gaming rig. Um, on the other hand, if you're going into CAD... You should probably have a desktop, and you can't game on those graphics cards anyway. They're designed literally just for doing CAD. So, I think those are the minimum specs: the processor, the RAM, the storage. I mean, everything else is and yeah, no discrete and graphics card. Anything else is just a personal online, preference. You probably don't, but uh, go out to to Walmart, to Best Buy, to. Uh, whatever local computer shop you've got around you, um, at micro center, and go play with a bunch of laptops because uh, it, not you, you the parent, uh, you the student, uh, ha have the student have the kid go out and play with the laptops because they're going to be on this, especially if you're going to buy to our advice and buy one machine. Uh, they're going to be on this for a long time. Make sure they don't hate the trackpad. There are some trackpads on some laptops that I absolutely refuse to use. They're just trash. I hate them. And I'm a keyboard snob, right? We on the show spent good money to get these USA-made IBM Model M keyboards shipped to us yes. uh, in beautiful, brilliant colors, which I wish they would sponsor the show and give me more keyboards. But I'm a keyboard snob, and some laptop keyboards are just terrible. I cannot use them at all. I, I hate the way they feel. And they don't sound good. I mean, this is how a keyboard should sound. Um, but, you know, make sure that they can stand it and that they'll like using it. Because if you just get anything, it's going to be hard to return it, most likely. How, what do you... What's your take on uh, uh, locks, uh, keyboard, I, uh, not keyboard locks, laptop we, locks? We used them when I worked at the university. We passed them out to people. Um, I, I personally think they're useless. Um, if we we could probably spend, yeah, we could spend an entire episode talking about laptops. This is a trust. The basic rule is if you're leaving, even for a minute, even to just get a drink of water from the water fountain that's down the hallway and you can still see your laptop, you do not walk away with it. You pack it up, you take it with you, you un you go back to where you're sitting and you unpack it. You never leave it alone. Uh, that's really the biggest rule. I mean, this is more of a trust issue with your roommate and or and other, but I never bought one. I never had a problem. I'm just, the problem, okay. And then finally, yes. if you're buying a laptop, be ready to buy accessories. So the first thing that you want to buy is an external hard drive. That could be a spinning platter. It could be $100 at Costco, get you two terabytes. Buy it. You're yep. going to need it. That's one. Probably a mouse if you're going to if you buy a wireless mouse. Yeah, get a. Uh, I'm trying to think of anything else. A case. You obviously want a case. Or a bag, not not get, not, get a, a nice, not a not uh, a hard shell case, but a bag to carry. That's what I'm using forever. I switched to briefcases. I hate briefcases; they're annoying. Get a backpack; they're great. And for students that are literally carrying their lives around every day, a backpack is just fantastic. I 
And that's a good analogy. You are literally carrying your life, your schoolwork, everything with you. So be ready. Do you really want to trust this to a $300 machine? And we're not saying the $300 machines they're are pretty not, close to the worst. They're not the worst, but pretty this is what you're going for four years. Just think. <laughs> It's it, yes. You want to you want to spend some money, and if money's tight, there's like we said at the beginning. Start with a Chromebook. If you can't do it on a Chromebook, remember the computer labs are there for you to use. They have all the software that you need. Buying a computer is a convenience for something else. You can find. If you want to watch a movie? You can go to your. You could use. You can go to your in your dorm. Other people will be playing movies. Befriend them. Go to the library, go to the computer lab. You can watch movies there. The laptop or desktop is a convenience for you. So if money is tight, yes, start I with agree. the Before Chrome, we leave, and I then know we're a little bit it. over, we have to play laptop brand name bingo because people ask me, what's a good laptop? Is L good? Is Acer good? Should I go buy Lenovo? And we're going to play laptop brand name bingo, and I'm going to tell you who's who. All right. Well, no, no, before, hold on, hold on. Before we do that, I just want to say, so you said go to Walmart, Best Buy, Acre Center, and play with it. No. I, just no. agree with me. Don't actually buy, buy for buy Walmart machine, or Best Buy or State. Go to just the go manufacturer's website, build it there, and check their price. Then go to Amazon and check their price. Price check everything because crazy people have crazy sales. Do some searching on Google. Maybe you'll find this the laptop of your dreams on Woot for $100 uh, you know, in a bag of crap, which is one of the things Woot sells. Um, so yeah, don't don't buy from the big name stores. Buy from the manufacturer if you can. Uh, Amazon's a good place to buy them. Uh, even eBay, if you can find something nice, you're technical and you know what to look for. Yes. But call the Dell site up. Somebody will walk you through this and you tell them this is what I want. They'll they'll help you. Don't don't trust the the, yeah, the best buy to read the tag for you. Have been you can less read. Than helpful uh, in personal experience so, uh, and from things I've heard from family members. It's, if you call Dell, it is literally their job to make you happy. So if you say, "Well, it's a laptop for college." You'll say, "Oh, that's great. Here's this 10% student discount. And here's these 20% discounted laptops that we've made specifically for students that have a bag and a mouse and a, a portable hard drive. And don't let them sell you the security software in the office. You can get that yourself. But it's their job to pick out something that will fit into your life. So give them a call. All right. Hey, sir. Stay away. Okay, laptop bingo. Also, no quality. They literally fall apart. They're just trash. Um, Asus. A-S-U-S. Uh, Asus is great. It's awesome. Their cheap stuff is kind of falling apart. If you get 600 bucks and above, great build quality, fantastic machines. Uh, Dell. Dell, uh, if you stay away from the consumer line, don't buy an Inspiron. Uh, XPS, yeah, you can take it or leave it, depending on the model. Uh, get a Latitude. That's their business class. A little bit more expensive. A pleasure to work on, especially if you're upgrading anything. Uh, and they're rugged. They're built for the business. Um, HP, they're getting better. Stick to the business side because everything else is trash. And be careful. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip flop. I'm gonna say I'm more on the Dell side than the HP side. Yeah, but other yeah. than that, uh, and uh, well, HP basically also both has of them stand with catching side. fire. It's really weird. Um, Lenovo, no, we've we have we have encountered too many problems from Lenovo recently. Stay far away. No. Um, Toshiba, no, trash. Unless you're getting something that's a thousand bucks or more, uh, Toshiba's machines are just horrible quality. Who am I forgetting? I know I'm forgetting someone. Uh, that's HP now. I'm, I'm going back to the old style. Compacts, those are still the Tandy, if you can find anything. I, I think that's it. Tandy, I think those are the big ones. Buy it I instantly. mean. I mean, basically, the other good thing with Dell and HP is, is they actually have a phone number that you can call, and they're used to all your calls. 
They, they've seen it all. So calling Dell, calling HP is going to be your best bet. You know what? They're going to give you a good deal. And you know, I mean, there's no Dell store, HP store, but they're at least there. So those are our two picks. And I mean, and you like Asus. I never had any yeah. experience with them, but you've had more experience. So uh, Apple's always good. If that, you're okay with a Mac, uh, I would some stay schools with the big require names. Apple machines. Um, if that's your game, if you like OS X, if you like Apple ecosystem, they're great. They're awesome. At any price point, if you can find an Apple laptop, you found something that, that'll stick around for a while. Yeah. And you can go to Genius Bar and they will fix it there. So, okay. We've definitely run over, so let's let's end it here. If you See have questions, everyone. obviously message us. We'll tackle it next show. Okay. Bye.